Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to look at using Mother32 and Mavis together and see how the two instruments, when used together, can enhance each other's patching functionality. Specifically, we're going to look at how Mother32's filter can enhance the wavefolding input on Mavis. So to do this, I'm going to begin by patching from the KB output of Mother32 to the Volt Per Octave input on Mavis. This is going to allow the sequencer and keyboard on Mother32 to control the pitch of Mavis. And next, I'm going to patch the gate output on Mother32 to the gate input on Mavis. And this is going to allow the sequencer and keyboard to trigger the envelope. Um, from there, I'm going to patch the VCO output on Mavis to the external input on Mother32. And you'll notice on the mix knob, I have the mixer set to the noise slash external input setting. And that's going to allow me to just listen to Mavis's output rather than the oscillator of Mother32. Next, I'm going to patch the VCF output on Mother32 into the fold input. And so what I'm doing now is I'm going to take the sawtooth wave on Mavis. I'm going to feed it into Mother 32's filter so that I can remove some of the harmonic content from that waveform. And then I'm going to feed it back into the folder so that the wave folder has a little bit more to bite into than it would if I just fed a raw sawtooth wave in. So to hear how that sounds, I'm going to flip the VCA mode on Mavis to on so that it drones. You can see I have the filter wide open here. And first, let's listen to how the wave folder will affect just the raw sawtooth wave. So you can hear there's a little bit of waveform animation that occurs when I turn that knob. But now let's hear what happens if I filter down the waveform a little bit on Mother 32. So if I take a waveform like this that sounds closer to a triangle wave, and I turn the fold knob now, you'll hear that it has a much more dramatic effect. You can hear that the wave folder just has more to fold in on itself. And if I leave the folding on and I now adjust the cutoff, you'll hear a little bit of animation on the waveform as well. And the nice thing is I also have a filter after the wave folder on Mavis. So I can still filter the wave folder after the folding process, but also before the folding process. This also can be nice because if I use the LFO on Mother32, then I can animate this filter before it hits the folder. And now I'm going to use the LFO to modulate the filter. So you can hear with the two LFOs modulating these two filters, I can get some interesting timbral shifting happening as they modulate. So now let's look at taking this one step further. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpatch the filter output from the folder. And instead, I'm going to patch the filter output on Mother32 to the Mix2 input. And then I'm going to take the VC Mix output, and I'm going to patch that back into the folder. The reason that I've done this is because this folder is actually gain-based, so it means that the louder the signal fed into it, the more folding will occur, and the quieter the signal, the less folding. And because I've patched the VC mix, I now have a volume control over the filter output before it hits the folder. So I can use this knob similarly to the wave folding knob itself. And let's hear how that sounds. I'll start by turning the VC mix all the way up and just listening to the fold knob. I'll also turn some of this modulation off so we just hear the raw signal. So now notice I'm going to get almost the exact same effect if I just turn the VC mix knob. The main difference is that I can actually go to silence as well.
But a new advantage that I have in using the VC mix knob is that it's voltage controllable, so all of a sudden I'm able to get voltage control over the wave folder on Mavis. So to hear how that sounds, I'm going to patch the LFO output on Mavis to the VC mix control on the VC mixer from Mother32, and we can hear now that the LFO on Mavis is going to control the wave folding amount on Mavis. And I can use the VC mix knob here to offset the modulation to get the amount of animation that I want to occur. We can also take the attenuator on Mavis and patch the LFO into the attenuator input, take the attenuator output, and go back to the VC mix control. And now this attenuator will allow me to control how much of that LFO modulation is going to hit the VC mixer. So now you can hear I have voltage control over the folding. And then I'm going to bring back in my LFO modulation on the filter to add a second point of voltage control over this timbre shift. You can hear we can get some really interesting movement from this. So now let's look at animating this while a sequence plays. Uh, and for this example, I'm going to turn the VCA mode from on back to EG so that the VCA is controlled by Mavis's ADSR envelope. I'm going to hit play on the Mother32 so that the sequence runs. And I'm actually going to unpatch this VC mix control from the LFO. And now I'm going to add two points of modulation to the VC mixer. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gate input to Mavis and I'm going to instead patch it to the malt so that I can get two copies of Mother32's gate. I'm going to patch the first gate back into the gate input on Mavis and the second into the gate input for the sample and hold on Mavis so that I can get a little bit of random modulation. And by patching to this gate input, I'm going to sync the sample and hold so that it generates a random value every new step of the sequence so it will be synchronized together. I'm going to then take the sample and hold output and I'm going to go to the one input on the utility mixer in Mavis's patch panel. Uh, I'm going to patch the LFO back into the attenuator like I had it before, but this time I'm going to patch the attenuator output into the two input on the utility mixer. And from there I'm going to patch the output of that mixer back to the VC mix control CV input on Mother32. So with this patching, what I've done is add voltage control over the wave folder coming from both an LFO and a sample and hold. So let's listen to the sequence running and what happens when I add some of that modulation into the wave folder. I'm turning down the modulation on Mother32 for now, just so I can only hear the wave folder. And let's listen to the sample and hold. So now you can hear I get this nice stepped modulation on the wave folder sound. And then I'm going to add a little bit of LFO modulation into that stepped movement. So now you can hear I get this complex modulation where I have a little bit of the sweep from my LFO as well as the sample and hold modulating the wave folding depth. And now I'll reintroduce some of my cutoff modulation on Mother32 as another point of animation for bringing this signal alive. And then, on top of that, I'm going to add a little bit of filtering to my signal and then use the envelope and LFO on Mavis to modulate the cutoff of the filter.
So you can hear I have this really interesting pattern happening now with lots of nice animation in the signal. And to put a little bit of an effect on, I'm now going to go into my computer and I have a copy of the MF108S Clusterflux plugin and I'm going to turn that on to add a little bit of chorus to the patch. So as you can hear, using Mother32 and Mavis side by side creates a system that's more than the sum of its parts, and having the two patch bays next to each other allows for some extended and unique patching techniques.